Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! You're getting awesome! We're getting awesome! Yeah, that's what I said now! Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. We are back, and mm-hmm. we do awesome things here. We yes. uh, talk about nerdy things. We get geeky. We let ourselves get geeky with no excuses here None. on this show. None Not at all. One. Not at all. Uh, as Not you can never. see behind me, Rob De La Creta has joined us on video. Oh, you got a great shot there. <laughs> I love the use of white space in your shot, sir. It's nice. It's um. It's not even gray, but it looks gray, and I uh, I don't know why. Is that like perfect gray or? What are you, what are you, uh, what are you it looks like a really gray? nice fifty percent gray, but it's actually baby blue. <laughs> are you wearing clothes? What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> I'm naked at the moment. I'm going to do the entire podcast naked. Did we just catch you uh, getting out of the shower? Oh, why, hello there. <laughs> we'll see. I've got. I've got. I've got this. Is what I got. Oh, thing. I don't want to know what that is. That ah, looks dirty. <laughs> okay, anyways. anyways it we... looks great over here, but you know what I'm, I'm sure. drinking, more importantly. Okay. okay. What, what you sipping on? <laughs> there he comes. I, uh, I made a, um, an ice cream and Red Bull float. That sounds disgusting. It is amazing. That if, sounds... You lo- if you enjoy the taste of Red Bull... I don't. It will, for the rare people who do, such as myself, it is the tastiest thing in the world. Uh, and uh, I had uh, a pretzel for food today, so... Catch up on my calorie count. Red Bull ice cream float. I'm just I'm just putting this out there. Uh, the uh, uh, I can't even use the word disgusting. Disgusting. So I'm just gonna call it disgusting. It's uh, I'm it taking the D out. It's actually it's Edie's uh, Samoa Girl Scout cookie flavor. Why would you do that with Red Bull? <laughs> That's a delicious ice cream. Why would it's, you do that? It's really tasty. I'm certain it isn't. I, I was I needed I was going to be grumpy grumpy pants but oh. I didn't get this so you should be happy that I'm drinking. No, actually <laughs> I'm mad that you're not grumpy grumpy pants because I want you to be really angry because we probably have some angry things to talk about this probably, week. Probably, probably, probably. I mean, there's there's a lot of hate going on in the computer world. So I want you to be at your hatefulness, and you drinking Red Bull and ice cream would make me incredibly hateful, but you apparently a pleasant individual. Yes, that's how that All works. Right. Bounces me out. Oh, there you see, replacing the chachi on the couch is AJ. I'm how not you doing? high. I'm not high. Not don't high. Do drugs. No, no, don't, don't do drugs, kids. Virtualpotholes.wordpress.com. That's where you need to go now. That is correct. Uh, I blog nerdier things there. Uh, still have the eating blog, so if you enjoy watching what I eat, uh, you can you can still read that one. Uh, but this one's where I actually talk about the things we talk about mm-hmm. on the show. So. There's symmetry and uh, a circularness to it. And that's hey, uh, hey, hey, AJ. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Speaking of meat, uh, it's a shame you weren't at our uh, at Fatheads last night because the wings were amazing. Uh, time out, real quick. Time out. <laughs> I wasn't talking about meat for like the last fifteen minutes, but all right. I'm just saying. Just bringing it around. Yeah. Just, uh, just wrapping it up. Yeah, I was at the gym last night, so Ooh. not happy. That's ajeats.wordpress.com. That's ajeats.wordpress.com <laughs> if you want to know what I'm trying eating. Trying to bring it back around. So, yes. um, anyways. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get geeky here. It's a... Uh, it, it, wow. Um, <clears throat> if you want to contact us on anything we're talking about, you agree with, want to add, comment on, uh, hit us up at contact at awesomecast.com. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at awesomecast. Hello. Hello. It's fine. Little. Hello. It's time. Is it time? It's time. Microwave's done. Oh, Which okay. is really funny because that event it wasn't supposed to happen for like another two weeks. But that's oh, cool. interesting. That's well, cool. that's what you do running beta software. You can also call us at 724-258-CAST. That's uh, 252-2278. And uh, look us up on iTunes, Mediafly, Roku, Boxes. Like that Boxes? Like, boxes? Boxes. Boxes? By the way, you said or his boxy. Twitter name wrong the entire time and he never corrected you. What did I do? What? You said it was with a K. It's with a C-H. No, the K is the public one. Is it? Yes. It isn't. That's how it was explained to me. Huh. What's happening? Well, I just ruined... Sorry, Brian. There we go. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. It used to be Whoops. Stab of Tech with a C-H <laughs> underscore pub, and I couldn't... Okay. Now, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now it's with We're... a K. Who knew? Yeah. There you go. I didn't. Uh, but Fair please enough. leave comments on that Blip TV YouTube as well, as uh, Chachi did. Ch- Chachi, not here. He's at home watching Power Rangers on Netflix from his couch. All week long. 
uh, because he had surgery Monday. Uh, you know, best of luck to him. Yo, getting well better. Soon. I'm, I knew. I think we need to get armbands. Armbands, chachi yeah. armbands, black armbands. I, I wonder if we can fashion an armband out of materials here in the studio. Chachi, you're missed. Maybe if uh, there you go. We'll never um, forget you. Pour one out forever. Chachi until like next week. Chach yeah. one forever. Chach, chach one. Chach one. No, chach one. He's been blogging though. There's a lot of stuff over there. Chachi says. Yeah. So if you go to Chachi says on that, read his blog. Like you yeah. might read mine. Where is you go? Uh, uh, but he like he said like he said he did email. He did email. Can I read the uh, email? Yeah, you can. And, and Riz actually uh, was also commented on I think the subject that he gets into here about uh, can we? His comment was, "Can we have a parade on, on Awesome Cast yet for what was announced in uh, California for California?" Uh, go ahead in that email, sir. All right. Uh, hold on here. Uh, let me get this mic a little closer. All right. Um, <laughs> hey guys, I wanted to email to talk about California's failure. The Supreme Court ruled against the state of California wanting to limit the sale of violent video games to children, but it's not all what you think I w- would say. It says gonna, but I said would because he would say it if he were here. Oh, he was definitely already on the post-surgery drugs here. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, look yeah. The, look at the spelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes. <laughs> uh, the spelling goes downhill from here. So okay. unlike Chachi and Riz emails on another show that we uh, do immediately after this, uh, I'm going to fix his. Uh, this is good and bad. Good because it will hopefully prevent future laws in bans of video games just because the government feels like it. They need to show that their laws do not belong in my games. It also shows that it is not the government's job to do the parents' job. The parents are the ones that should decide which games their kids should or should not play. It's bad because more crimes and actions taken by kids will be blamed on the content of video games. It leaves the potential for another Columbine, but those are just my thoughts. Sorry for the typos. Meds are kicking in. Morph and Morph and Power Rangers. Chachi. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so yeah, uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, pretty much said freedom of speech. You can't out ban violent video games in California. Yep. And there you go. Yeah, so I, I, I can see... I see both of Chachi's points here. It's good government staying out of the public or staying out of the personal lives of people and making parents do the parents' job. That's great. I still think he's wrong on the uh, the <laughs> video games will always be blamed whether the government limits them or not. It's the mm-hmm. same reason why cars get blamed for all kinds of accidents. Speed doesn't kill, sudden stops do. So it, it's in that same vein. Guns don't kill people. People who pull triggers kill people. That mm-hmm. sort of vein. Um, it, movies will to, always be blamed. Pop culture will always be blamed. Right. Your parents will always be blamed. Yeah, I mean it's it's up to the parents to take care of their kids. If you're if you don't want your kids playing violent video games, don't let your kids play violent video games. Simple. Uh, if you rely on the government to do those sorts of things, you are affecting people who are grown enough to make decisions to do those sorts of things. And speaking of uh, violence out of video games. Uh, I had a fly problem and then used my Call of Duty skills to eliminate the fly problem. Did you throw a grenade at the fly? Nope, use my knife. Mm. Except instead of a knife, I use junk mail. So that is not somewhere you can put the wow. camera shot. <laughs> Ta da! We're using this shot later. I keep, mm-hmm. I, I keep dumping to his crotch. Yeah, you I'm keep sorry dumping about that. to that, and that is not the shot you want this keep- time. <laughs> no. Dump it to the junk. Don't dump to the junk. But this Don't is but this, the junk. but this is an industry that, for the most part, is uh, attempting to self-regulate itself. A mm-hmm. lot of times, I mean, you can't. It, it asks you if you buy a MA17 game at Walmart uh, for ID. You but know? then I mean, it's up to the cashier at said Walmart to care. To you know. care, and yeah. that's the big difference. Yeah, but you... how many underage kids have been led into a rated R movie? Come on. Oh, plenty. Yeah. How about this one? Same thing. Same general. Same general thing. I went to Walmart. To buy paint thinner for my dad when we were cleaning Ooh. our when we were cleaning a deck. Yeah, they wouldn't let me buy it because I wasn't eighteen because they yep. thought I was going to use it to huff. And yep. so I went to a local hardware store where they know me and my dad and bought it there. And I thought about it and I said, "Okay, what happens when I turn eighteen and I still want to huff paint thinner? Like <laughs> <laughs> all the paint thinner? You I can want. huff all the paint thinner I want. I'm an adult. I can make decisions. But apparently, once you're under the age of 18, you can't do that. It do- it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't buy uh, any spray paint until you're 18. You can't buy lighter fluid until nope. you're 18. I don't think you can buy any containers of fuel until you're 18. And these are these I think are. You can buy an empty container. 
Yeah, an empty container, but you can't buy anything that like. And contains. these are knee jerk reactions to problems like, oh, yeah. oh, the kids are going and doing this. Kids are being violated and having violent video games because it's their the parents same. are buying them anyway. So let's ban them. Let's let's yeah. make it. Let's 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 get rid of it for the people that are responsible of whatever age. Right. You know? Right. We're, yeah. It's up to parents and grown adults to be responsible for their children. Mm-hmm. The period. End of story. And mm-hmm. this has been the same thing that's been going on for years. Uh, I can't even remember because he was such a jerk, and I can't remember the guy's name. Who was the lawyer that was in Florida that was effectively suing anybody and everybody you could for the content and violent video oh, games? Not, oh, that guy. Not Lieberman. Um, Sorry, Jack, chat room, help me out. Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson. Yeah. Who I think uh, last night knew was being disbarred. Yep. Jack Thompson got disbarred because he filed so many frivolous lawsuits. Um, but Jack Thompson is also the reason for one of the greatest charities and uh in the on the internet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because uh the penny arcade another um another uh, uh, uh website on the internet that guy jack thompson uh <laughs> pointed out or or attempted to make the point that all people who play violent video games end up becoming psychopaths and crazy people and just want to destroy uh the world and then uh, the people at Penny Arcade said, uh, no, we're not. Let's show, let's kill them with kindness. So they started this charity to, uh, put video games into hospitals. This should sound familiar to those of you who have listened to the show and to our, com- our, and to our comrade, uh, Chachi, who did effectively the same thing, mm-hmm. uh, where they took donations, uh, and put up an Amazon wish list of all the video games, systems, games, controllers, Board games, toys, all that stuff. Put together a giant Amazon wish list originally for just Seattle Children's Hospital, and they filled a swimming pool. And it's, it's gotten bigger and bigger to the point now where they now have a black tie event mm-hmm. where they get, everybody gets dressed up, and they au- they auction off once-in-a-lifetime things like, hey, you could play Halo with the guys who made the game, or hey, here's yeah. a tour of... Uh, the Microsoft Xbox Studios, or hey, we'll put you into one of our comics. And scripts. just looking at, it, I didn't notice this. We're on the video here. We're showing a map from their mm-hmm. uh, childsplaycharity.org. Yep. Uh, look at all of the places that they donate to, including other countries yep. now. Like there's Canada, Egypt. there's uh, UK. Is that Egypt? That is Egypt. Wow, Australia. Yep. I mean, it has gotten and big. Oh wait, what's this? Uh, total contributions: uh, two million dollars, two hundred ninety-four thousand. 317 and, and that was this year alone that was just this year and last year they did two they think they did one and a half million last year the year before mm-hmm. they did that to the point where they now have a full-time person dedicated to running that year yeah. round yeah it, they used to just do it just at christmas time and literally and, and chachi can attest to this video games and in games helping kids it's literally when kids go into the hospital and they're going in for a terminal illness all they want to do is be normal. That's it. They don't care what their disease is. They just want to be normal. And this is the sort of thing, this, you know, this hatred of violent video games. It started one of the best charities on the planet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's it, through that sort of thing. So, you, you know, you can hate on all, violent video games all you want to. Video game people are, uh, people who play video games are not crazy violent people. I play yeah. Call of Duty for hours on end. <laughs> I it, it was literally to the point and where you're a normal, well-adjusted, a normal, well-adjusted uh, contributor human being. to society. I am. I have a don't listen to job. him on Wrestling Mayhem show. No, <laughs> don't. I, I will admit that I've played Need for Speed a, a few times and then drove a little fast in my car. Yes, but Rob, speed doesn't kill. Sudden stops do. Yeah, I yeah. definitely ran over at least ten old people in the process. Well, then, <laughs> bonus points for you. <laughs> Well, hey guys. Speaking of other people doing rash uh, things, uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, nice. I, I, nice. This 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 is good. Uh, uh, Rob, I think you contributed this next story. Oh, that that funny story. Yeah, Golly remember gee. that time? Remember back in the day? Yeah, Can yeah. We... Remember remember that time? That hey. faithful day. It was kind of like you know, it was a it was a warm day a few months ago, and really? Really? you know, a uh, bunch of people at Sony. Um, say uh say uh a, a, a really good percentage of their security team um they get a little phone call from up top said hey guys sorry no job you're done hey uh, remember yeah. when 
Yeah. Remember when that happened? And uh, it was it was actually mostly the employees in their network operations center. Oh. Um, which, according to a confidential witness, is the same group that is responsible for uh, preparing for and responding to, say, um, hmm, what are they called? Security breaches, right? Mm. And uh, who ostensibly has the skills to bring that network's uh, security technology up to date. And then remember when, like, a week later, people just started hacking the crap out of Sony. Wasn't that funny? Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, that was funny, wasn't it? So yeah, so uh, some witnesses came out, uh, or witnesses, some uh, confidential sources from within Sony uh, have come out in the uh, class action lawsuit cases that are floating around uh, Sony's head at the moment and said that Sony basically laid off the people that could have prevented the uh, attacks that led to the loss of all the customers' data and could have then, if, the, if even they had lost at that point, they could have been the ones to fortify the uh, the network after the fact. But unfortunately, they fired everybody who could have saved their butt, and that's why it took so long for Sony to get back online before they got hacked again and again and again. Isn't that funny? That's hilarious. It's, it really is funny. So so that, uh, you know, lesson learned. Don't fire your security staff, idiot. <laughs> Don't fire all of them all at once. Yeah. Like, have some good reason other than just, we need to save money. Mm-hmm. You know, those sorts of things. Hey, this is this is another one of those uh, stories that you know they always tell. They always tell about disgruntled security systems administrators who go a little crazy. Yeah, they're a little disgruntled with their former employer. Yeah. So. Do you remember? Uh, there was a story. Um, man, it was a few years ago, but it was uh, the sysadmin for some uh, for some. Uh, city or state's municipal system. Yeah, was it he San had Francisco? All the it was it San Francisco? I think it was San Francisco. I think it was San Francisco. Uh, yeah, and they so they uh, they laid him off, and on his way out, he locked everything down and refused to give them any of the passwords because he said that none of them were competent enough to run his software. Yep, yep. That's the sort of thing that we talk about with angry system administrators. Yes, <laughs> and as somebody who is a system administrator, uh-huh. uh huh. You get the you get the odd eye whenever yeah. you know whenever you see a request for some whatever that person leaves, that is a higher priority request than anything else. You lock their account the heck out. That's not to say that that administrator may or may not know accounts that have all the sorts of access that they used to have that were service accounts, or may know backdoors in the systems that they pointed out but then were never fixed. Those are the sorts of things that happen, and I'm sure that guy knew all of them. And I'm sure yeah. the Sony team knew all of them, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's stunning. Speaking of hackers, uh, the big the big news coming out this week is Geohot's been working for Facebook yeah. for a good while now. Man, I'm mad about that. Now, now for those who don't know, Geohot's the one that uh, Sony had been going after. Because uh, he had uh, what he had he had code for a mo- for a, that that hacks the PlayStation Three that opens he it up. He cracked the PS3's encryption. Yes, he unlocked the PS3. Now this which is a- was supposedly impossible, and he went, "Yeah, it took me like a day." And 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 Sony was going after him. There's yeah. a big legal thing. Yeah. Supposedly this sparked all of the you know them getting hacked you know, by this group. Yeah, it's, I they, mean they one they of the said reasons. That, that, this is one of those who knows the real reason. Mm-hmm. As to why it happened, but that's one of the things cited as yeah. for you know uh, uh, they like oh you're going after G- you're going after uh, Geohot? Eh, no thank you yeah um by the way he was the one who hacked he also was the first one to jailbreak the iPhone mm-hmm. and then when the when iOS three came out he jailbroke that um and the actually the day the iPhone four came out. There's a picture that he sent out on Twitter of the phone jailbroken. And he goes, wasn't that hard. <laughs> it's just a picture of the iPhone 4 sitting there. The day it came out, just sitting there on his counter running Cydia. No Photoshop, no nothing. He was like, it wasn't that hard. And then shortly thereafter, all the iOS 4 jailbreaks came out. Hmm. And he's the one who wrote Green Poison, Purple Rain, uh, Green Rain. And, uh, uh, I think he, no, he didn't do Red Snow. No, that was somebody else. That was somebody else. Well, you, when, yeah. you, when you think about it, if you, if you were to, uh, you know, hold the social network movie as 
your guide to that. I mean, he's he's kind of the kind of person they would hire at Facebook. He's one of those those coders that that gets around stuff like that. Well, I remember. Uh, I, I think he's still doing it. Remember what happened to Kevin Mitnick when he got out of uh, federal prison? Yeah, he got hired by somebody, and it goes it goes yep. back to that. I mean, this yeah. is this is. You know, they made these you noise, made big publicity. Hey, you just created a resume for yourself. Wade wide out in the public. I am all really over the stunned place. that Apple didn't go after him. Really? Oh, man. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Think about what he knows about the underlying basics of that operating system. It mm-hmm. is stunning. Mm-hmm. He knows probably he keeps. He, I know he had the one, the, the one boot ROM exploit that he was using for himself. And he wasn't giving it to anyone else until I think Green Poison came out, and he let that one go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there was all of this, you know, talk that you know he probably has a couple more in his pocket, a couple more exploits in his pocket that he found. He's not telling anybody. Keep it for a rainy day. Keep it for a rainy day. That's a great pun, Sorg. That was nice. <laughs> I like that one. Keeping it for a rainy day. Get it, and there are get, two get teams of people who are working on this, too. Mm-hmm. Dev team, the chronic team. And both teams are working on this and jailbreaking all this stuff, and he's sitting on the sidelines. In fact, I want to say it was the chronic team that was going to put out Green Poison. They had a release date, a release time, and all that other stuff. And then he put out Lime Rain or something like that and just blew away everything that they did. Dropped the exploit and everything, and they're like, you got to be kidding me. Like it was their it was their golden ticket exploit that they knew about that no one else did and he already had it and he dropped it and blew away four months of work for those guys. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, hey, that uh, that's the person. If I'm Apple, that's the guy I would have hired. Mm-hmm. If I'm Apple and I want to keep super tight control on my operating system and I don't want to let anybody jailbreak, I hire that guy. Mm-hmm. And I say, I want you to fix all these holes. You know about these holes? Find the holes and let's fix them. Go ahead. But I guarantee he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to get hired by that company because he wanted to have the free reign on his phone. And he didn't want to have to deal with it. Whatever. Speaking of iOS, uh, you guys have both been running the beta, and I know, AJ, you you just updated it. Yeah, I uh, I put beta 2 on my phone. Uh, yeah. I was not really happy with the... By the way, if you ever get into the whole I, like new version of iOS game, you also get into the new version of iTunes game, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make sure that you update your iTunes before you update iOS. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a big one. If you don't do that, you're not in a good place. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It'll update your phone. It just won't sync anything over. Ooh. Yeah, it won't do anything. Yeah. So and there's actually uh, if, gone if, and I was uh, mad. if you what what just dump into the sorry crotch Rob sync oh, right next to oh. each other crotch Rob <laughs> crotch Rob hi this is AJ's junk um. Uh, wow, through my brain off track. Well, while you're, you're thinking of that, uh, out there, Chilla, Chilla said in the chat room from our previous conversation, uh, so, why does Apple care? A million plus people are on T-Mobile. That's a million more <laughs> iTunes Apple Store users, which is a good point. I, that was, I that was a number that came out in the By last By the way, week. Chilla, I got a 3GS that's unlocked. Just, you know, if you want it. Um, just I can tell there. you. I actually, I have, I have an anecdote. I can tell you why Apple cares that people are on T-Mobile. Uh, because I know somebody who lives in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. So uh, she really wanted to get an iPhone, and she can't get AT&T or Verizon, so she ended up on T-Mobile. So she had to get an unlocked iPhone, mm-hmm. and then she got um, she got herself on T-Mobile. <clears throat> and T-Mobile actually sort of vaguely supports it. So initially, there was some issue with the, uh, I think, the Wi-Fi antenna in her phone or whatever. So she convinced them to give her a new phone. She got a warranty through whatever shady service she got the unlocked iPhone through. Um, and then it's, she just has like this notoriously bad service. So she calls up T Mobile and says, like, Hey, uh, a lot of my friends have T Mobile and they're fine. And I have terrible service on my iPhone. And they said, Uh, yeah, sure. We can totally fix that. If you just want to call one of our iPhone technicians, it'll only cost you $40 and they'll talk you through how to use this thing in the Cydia store to get better reception on T Mobile. That is why Apple wow. really cares that T-Mobile ends up with people on the iPhone. It's all about controlling the experience. So right now, she's like, I was talking to her yesterday. She's like, oh, I hate my iPhone. It's the worst thing in the world. No, no, let's let's straighten this out. You hate it because there's no Apple store nearby to take care of your troubles. The nearest Apple store is six hours away. 
Yeah, that's the other problem with the... Yeah. So it's tarnishing the Apple name because she's on T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's one more person to, to complain about that can't they can't do anything about. That actually, uh, actually, Apple really doesn't care. Uh, it may be tarnishing their image, and I know it's all about their experience, but that's a million more people that they don't have to totally support. Yeah, if they're you know getting money. But a uh, a disappointed person is a uh, hundred times louder than somebody who's really thrilled with their service. Also true. Also true. So, um, hey Rob. Uh, yeah. You want to send me a text real quick? Oh, yeah, we can do one. So, uh, iOS 5, uh, the beta 2, they changed the way, uh, they obviously changed the way notifications happen mm-hmm. in the store. Uh, but one of the things they changed was how it shows up on your lock screen. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it. Okay. Uh, and I wish I could turn it off or at least change how it does it. Um, but Rob is about to send me a text, and hopefully it doesn't have any dirty words in it. Bingo. So, it puts up this, uh, you know, full bubble, right? Yeah. That I just ruined. But the, there you go. Right? So it puts up the big bubble, and then it puts it up there on, as like a little thing here. And by the way, this is a slider, so you can unlock your phone up here and go straight into the text message. And first, apologies to our audio uh, only yeah, listeners. Yeah, so apologize to the audio. I'm apologizing to the audio listeners, of which I'm usually one. Um, I'm actually demoing this on a, on a camera. I feel like I'm Steve Jobs. So, um, so, so it places it under 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 the uh, the time is what you're saying, right? It places it under the time. The uh, issue that I have with it is is that it puts up the big giant bubble, okay, on the screen, and I don't like that. Okay. I wish I just got that. Does that only yeah. do it unlocked, or does it pop up? It's not popping up like that when you're in something. Yeah. So, um, Rob, go ahead and send me another text, there, guy. Okay. So when you're not locked, um, like say, open up words with friends, maybe. I'll open up Reader. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. So, you know, I'm reading a, a you know a nice little story. So it pops up at the top there. Yeah. Right? And it stays there. And, uh, you know, I'm going through my stories. And then it just goes away. Okay. Which is nice. And then on the drop down, it shows it there. Uh, and you can pull up that drop down you just did from any application. Right. right? This is just a straight... Swipe down from the from the uh, the taskbar. How does that work in uh, say games or other full screen apps that don't go go taskbar? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm trying to think of one that I have. I have five Angry Birds on here. Let's let's open that up. Because that, that's the that's my concern. Is does my Angry Birds get uh, interrupted? By the way, uh, dear Rovio, what's with this one level per day crap? <laughs> <laughs> what's up with that? That's not cool. I don't like that. Nobody likes that. I don't know what you're holding back on. I already downloaded the whole game, clowns. I, I know. I know. Berg baby was complaining about it because she has, uh, she's like at some pool party or something, and I was like, really, this is gonna last me the next like how many you know hour or whatever that she needs left. Right. So uh, Rob, go ahead and send me another one. So I'm playing. I'm playing my Angry Birds. All right. Go 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 get that summer level there. There you go. This summer levels. Ooh, I haven't you know. seen that one yet. This is the first one. Oh okay. So, so it's nice. Waiting for that text. All right, it pops up. That's cool. So, I'm still playing. It doesn't affect what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I'm still on. playing the game. You know, right? Because I mean, I and it works out. Down. It works out. I can still swipe down. Now, here are the really nice parts um, that I really, really like about uh, the beta two. This is one of the things that's really nice. They added your upcoming events for the next two days as calendar in there. Really? Yeah. So go ahead, flip back oh. that shot. Okay, going back. So there are my upcoming events. So like I have to take the trash out tonight, and I'm going to the gym tomorrow, and I'm doing the awesome cast right now. Yeah. And then I have a calendar invitation down here uh-huh. that comes up in my calendar as to, you know, what do I want to do with this? And this is uh, an event with, a, with some friends of mine. But it comes up as an event of something that I can do, but it shows up in my calendar in here. I'm really sorry I'm not jailbreaking anymore. That was one of the things that I was still I was still considering jailbreaking for because I really liked having my calendar and being able to see all of my events um, on uh, just in in line, and I didn't have to go into my calendar to see them. Uh, battery life markedly improved uh, in beta two. Uh, Rob, I don't know what your experiences have been with beta one. Uh, I am, uh, it's, well, the general, from what I've read online and my experiences, it seems like beta one just has, uh, some optimization things that are missing. 
Yeah. Uh, like little things where it's uh, loading and unloading uh, content, things like that. Where like if I made a phone call, I could probably do it right now. No, I can't. If, uh, if I made a phone call and I was on the phone and then I went and I did something else, I would open phone again and you would see that like the name of the person with grayed out buttons, which is what you would see when somebody hangs up. Yeah, it's, it's like still be there for half a second. Yeah, they they've gotten a lot better. This is a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's a really they they did a, a lot of things to smooth out issues. One of the other things I did was I turned off local weather, um, which okay. is usually a uh, it's a really nice feature, but um, really annoying uh, when your battery is dead. So. <laughs> um, I should it, also. It works really um, well. I mean, it picks up a lot better than the Android device that I had, which, uh, by the way, I sold on eBay for five dollars less <laughs> wait, than wait, I paid wait, for tell it. Wait, tell me, tell me the thing you told me uh, about today on your calendar. What about the, about you wanted to come back to the show today for? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually put tonight's show in my calendar a month ago mm -hmm. uh, when I got my Android device. As this is the end of my Android experiment, and I will tell you my findings. It took two weeks, kids. Two weeks. <laughs> Two. It ended with the beta announcement. It did. It yeah. ended with the beta. No, 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 no. It ended with. Yeah, you're right. It did end with the beta <laughs> announcement. <laughs> it did. I Rob, swapped it out the day of. What would you have there, Rob? Uh, oh well, I just wanted to say uh, generally because uh, the the uh, the release notes for beta two are especially scathing um, because I think at this point it is easy enough for people to get the uh, the beta on their devices without knowing a whole lot. Like you used to be. You used to have to be a developer or like a high level geek to figure it out. Now you can be like a mid level, like snotty teenager geek, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to figure it out without like paying a developer to add a UDID to make it a proof device. You can make it work, but it's one of those things where like I work with software, AJ works with software, mm -hmm. so we understand beta means that uh, you know don't don't bet the cow on, on whatever's on your phone because it might not be there tomorrow because it's beta. It's not, mm -hmm. not finished, mm -hmm. not finalized. It's a risk that you take. Um, but if you read the release notes for uh, Beta 2, they explicitly say, do not put anything important on your phone and do not put your backups in the iCloud and yeah. expect them to be there because we will be periodically wiping the servers clean. Because they're yep. still figuring it out. They're putting this beta yeah. out because they're trying to make sure the iCloud works before they unleash it on millions. Photo stream exactly. is actually really, really cool. Oh, yeah? By the way. Yeah, it, it is. It is instantaneous. That's that thing where you, well, you, you, you take a picture. And you it immediately you load shows up, up on the other device. On iPhoto. Yep. Or, or on now, your other device. So it shows up on my iPhone. We talked about this before the show. Yeah. Now, uh, app purchasing had an interesting yeah for you. yeah so app purchasing uh when you buy an app uh it will automatically install on your other devices iphone ipod ipad ipad i'm sorry a a all and, uh, and ipod yeah so so any ios device it shows up so here's the really fun part um my uh, fiance bought an app to test out which required me to be on wi-fi to download it mm -hmm. and it wouldn't stop telling me that and it killed my battery oh it just kept asking me, even though I was hitting cancel. It was literally flashing like a heartbeat. It was going like, it was like canceling itself. And I was hitting cancel and it, oh, it got, my phone got really hot and my battery dropped <laughs> by a lot. And, uh, so eventually I just connected to Wi Fi, downloaded it, and then deleted it. That's how I got around it. But that's, these are the sorts of things that happen. And, uh, I hope that, I mean, like, you gotta remember that, that it will do that. Mm -hmm. and, and this could be an early thing, and they could give you options when you buy them. Like, I most certainly hope so. I, you know, the, I, I would think the smart thing would think, say, like, say I got Justin TV app, and it, it pops a dialog. You also want it on and the list of your devices that are registered, maybe. Yeah, you know, that would be uh, nice because I mean, you are legally allowed to have what five devices on an account. Something like that. I think it makes more sense for you to have like, okay, say you, you and the wife have iPhones, you have iPads, the kids have an iPad, something like that. You know, that's that could get so unwieldy if you're yeah. like buying games here and buying this for the wife and buying it, like you know, you know your it wife can get messy your wife quickly. your wife buys a you know and you know they, these are out there your wife buys like a period tracker or something because you're trying to get pregnant yeah. and it just popped up on your kid's iPad. Yeah, that's awkward. I mean that that's a little bit awkward, Daddy. And, what's this? Uh, can, can we? There's also the uh, let's let's say you were a, a senator or something. Your name is Wiener, and uh, you put <laughs> some some pictures on your 
on your phone. Those will show like, up in photo stream. And it would just show up in your photo stream. Wow. Well, let's say you had that photo stream running on your Apple TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Whoops. that happens. That you can that's, do that. Wow. That, so, so this could sync also with your Apple TV. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, gonna, gonna, yeah and happen. you know, this is one of those things people are not going to understand. This is kind of one of those out there concepts, you know, uh, thinking outside of the box concepts that the, the, the typical person buying an iPhone and everything are not going to understand. And they're going to under, they're going to wonder why their kids are getting their naughty pictures they're sending to their girlfriend. The problem yeah. is you can't delete from the photo stream, which is really annoying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I have a picture in there that I deleted on my phone, but it's not deleted out of my photo stream, and I can't go in there. And I've also had uh, that's something else I wanted to mention. Uh, somebody sends you a picture via text message uh, in iOS five beta one, at least. If you save that picture, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it disappears into the ether. It's kind of annoying. They fixed a, they fixed a lot of things that were breaking other apps though, like TweetDeck that I have on my phone. Yeah. Um, I also noticed it uh, seems like apps are having like they changed something in the way that it's reading its uh, its Wi-Fi or internet connectivity because a lot yeah. of the apps that I used like suddenly were having little heart attacks saying that like you're not connected to the internet. Safari was doing that for me, so yeah. Apple uh, apparently didn't fix their own apps. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's it, uh, it it it's a really uh, a far better uh, 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 version. And uh, people should be really excited. Uh, speaking of updates mm. to mobile OSs, mm -hmm. I read a review of Windows Phone 7.5, the Mango update. The Mango, yeah. The Icy Light Mango update. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, one of those the other day at a tailgate. Is it? Yeah. You know? Is it disgusting? Like no, I think it is? I, you know, I heard it's pretty good. You know what? I was drinking a Mountain Dew. They were like, oh, you should try the Mango. It'll, it'll go great after that Mountain Dew. And it was actually okay for that. It's not something... I would drink on a regular basis. I, I want to just get one. We just turn into a different kind of show. And I just want to try it. Just <laughs> one. Just one icy light yeah, mango. Yeah, you kind of have to. I like really good beer, but yeah. just, just, I, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, really, how bad could this possibly taste? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, but, uh, 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 speaking of battery life. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, some kids, some scientists at the University of Minnesota, have created what they call a phase-changing alloy that generates electricity from excess heat. As in, this piece of metal gets hot, it gets magnetic, and then that magnet is then used to generate electricity. As in, your car's exhaust could charge the battery of your hybrid and thus get you further along the road. Or, say, the alloy is made into brake pads so that when you stop your electric vehicle is charging your battery or say the exhaust from your laptop that metal on mm -hmm. the heatsink could be used to charge the battery of your laptop or your phone or there are a lot of uses here and i thought it was uh, really really neat hmm neat i'm sure that's like 20 years out from uh being it's out. a couple of years out yeah, yeah a few years, years out it's something that the military has been playing with for a while and there's also um the uh, I forget what it's called the law the law of uh, power consumption or something like that that basically says that like you cannot like say you have a device say say you're going to do the the example of powering your laptop off of the heatsink attached to your laptop mm -hmm. because of the way physics works that will never be an absolute solution you'll still have to plug it in at some point right this is for yeah. you know partially charging yeah. This isn't gonna. This isn't you know running this your laptop is isn't gonna when, be a. Especially we're talking about combustion engines or you know hybrids, whatever. Um, there's this only is a, for reducing your yeah. your your lack of charge. The wasted, reducing right. the wasted energy that goes off because you yeah. only get right. a certain percentage of the right. energy from a Absolutely. combustion engine used in the car, and right. it's just wasted. And uh, right, but this is this still gets something. It, it gets it back a little bit. It reduces it. Makes it yeah. more efficient. Yeah. yeah, which could also lead to if uh, if you can build this into battery technology itself. Mm -hmm. You end up with like lithium ion batteries that last for years instead of weeks. Yeah. Yep. Um can I get really weird here? Uh do uh, I get to keep my pants on? Yes you do. Okay. Hey, let's do it. Um advertisers have been trying to advertise the humans for years and now they're trying with monkeys. Hmm. I like monkeys. So what they're doing, universe uh, researchers from the University of uh, from Yale University 
uh, found out that uh, given uh, limited resources, uh, certain monkeys act like humans and will do certain things for said resources. Money, bananas, whatever it is. Are we sure this isn't promotion for uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Uh, no. By the way, I love the picture on this uh, on this article. Yeah, that's a great picture, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, it's definitely in the picture. What are so those monkeys doing? What they're doing is they're going to make two foods and just make them different colors. One, brand A, will get advertising. One, brand B, will not. Brand A's advertising will feature the alpha male of the group just hanging out with this food. Like, hey, you want to be the alpha male? Eat this food. And the other will have a female monkey, genitals exposed, <laughs> just hanging out. Saying, hey, eat this food, you'll get this uh, body, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is. Uh, I, And I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking to myself, hey, isn't this how advertising for people works, too? Yeah. They have some cool guy hanging out with, like, a Miller Lite. And if yep. you want to be this cool guy, drink this Miller Lite. Hey, you want to hang out with these hot chicks that are, like, pretend lifeguards that are supposedly saving you from bad beer? Drink this Miller Lite. How is this different? It's not. Instead, they're just going to, instead of having, like, you know, this fake premise that you're being saved from bad beer, they're just going to have female monkeys just genitals out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how this works, apparently, in the monkey world. It's a cutthroat advertising business in the monkey world. <laughs> wow. So, speaking of uh, of monkey genitals. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what could possibly come after speaking of monkey genitals? Speaking of monkey genitals, uh, Google Plus. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's effectively the same thing. It is. Actually, um, if you, uh, if you, uh, I don't know what the legitimate address for Google Plus is. I'm looking at google.com slash intl slash en dash us uh, slash plus slash learn more slash index.html. I don't no know how you get I'm there. I Googled. That. <laughs> so figure it out. But there's a lovely graphic at the top that could be misinterpreted as genitals. Um, more importantly, uh, Google Plus, uh, Google's competitor, Facebook. How about that business? Um, Anybody pay attention to this at all? Yeah, I saw this today. It looks like Facebook. It talks like Facebook, but it looks, it's just another thing that they're, that people are trying to make like a Facebook like thing. Yeah. It's got a lot of, um, neat features. Yeah. It's got a lot of neat features. There's some things about it that basically this will be successful if they can make it ubiquitous. Which is always the problem with social media stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. This will be this will be if it doesn't suck out of the gate. Yeah, which yeah. is what if, Wave and Buzz did. Or if the it... Google engineers got to keep their hands out of the UI design, it might actually be okay. Uh, if the Google engineers kept their hands out of their pants, it'll probably be okay. Oh boy. So I mean, well, what is it? I mean, this is this is Facebook for the Google verse, right? I mean, that's is that how they're pitching yes, it? But the problem yeah, is what it looks like. The I problem mean, is is that this. Thing, Google Plus doesn't talk to anything. It's not, just not like yet. Buzz. It's just like Wave. It doesn't interface with the, all the crap. Wait, I now, have wait a minute. Does it have anything to do with the Google Plus Up system that you're seeing everywhere now? That's uh, like the light. Yes, like it I does. Plus, yes, it the does. plus one. So yeah, this, this does the, have yeah. a little bit. They have a start of it. What yep. they've been talking. What the, what this whole service is generally designed to do is unite a bunch of crap that Google already does. Mm-hmm. Like their uh, their video and audio chat that they have in Google Talk is now in here, and um, the uh, various uh, things that they have, like uh, like the what Buzz was, mm-hmm. where you have like a feed, and these are all your people, and you can have Which circles. Which are called circles, as we're seeing yeah. on the video here. And you can have these people and. You can add them to these groups, and you can send things to these groups. So now you're getting into the group messaging, like Why Beluga. Is everything obscenely and group close me. up on this video <laughs> because they want to make sure you're seeing crap and it's, Epic it's... Bros. And <laughs> yeah, there's see. also some like there's some weird things to it. So it if talks. you actually like listen to the voice over the video, so this seems far too simplified. Uh, it's it's almost that it's overcomplicated actually because really? what they want you to do, well, I mean, they want you to organize your friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is something that, like, the voice over the video, uh, for the video, is essentially somebody saying, like, you know, sometimes somebody wants to be your friend, and you gotta ask yourself, like, do I have room in my life for this person? Because, like, people have a lot of friends, you know, so you're like, do I have time for another person that I'm gonna have to send a Christmas card or whatever, and things like that. Um, and so Circles is almost like forced segregation of your friends. 
They want you to quantify, like, these are the idiots. These are the acquaintances. These are family. This is crazy family. They want you to attach labels to everybody, which I think is kind of a weird approach. But the funny... So, I think, um, big game plan-wise, like, this is evolution of of social media and all that. Because you go back to, like, uh, um, MySpace and uh, and Bebo. Bebo, that's a thing, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Back in the, so that was a thing where you had to sign into it, and that's where it was. It was that little, like, nest on the internet, but it didn't talk to anything else. And then Facebook did a pretty decent job of the like button, where now, you know, every article you read and everything, you can share it, you can like it, you can do whatever you want. Same thing with Twitter. Um, and so this is basically Google's version, like AJ said, of trying to pull all of those resources into the same place. And it has some cool stuff, like... Uh, Sparks. So, uh, Sparks is, is kind of a cool thing. I think Sparks is probably the most useful thing out of it, which is, so, one of my biggest problems with lists on Twitter is that they're one way. You can follow a list, but you can't tweet to a list. Like, I I follow a lot of people, a lot of people follow me, but not all of them are from Pittsburgh, and not all of them really care that there's, like, a fire down the street. Right. I want to be able to tell just the people in my Pittsburgh group that, hey, there's this thing happening. It's only local to you, so it's only relevant to you. So the idea with Sparks is that you can divide the people that you uh, uh, talk with online into these groups. And when you like post something, share something like as if you had a blog or something like that or a Tumblr. Tumblr is pretty good um, comparison. You can say only send this thing yeah. about bikes to people who I know already know and enjoy bikes. Things like that. I, I, but this is where I still come back where there are people who have Facebook, there are people who have Twitter, and they have people that they want to talk to in their lives, and this is just another thing that yep. they now have to manage. The only way. If they had a way to just link it in, and yes. Facebook has a, yes. a, a poop load, I had to think of a non. <laughs> a na- naughty word for that. I'm pretty sure we can say poop on the show. Okay, good. good. A poop load of APIs to get. Your stuff into Facebook. Yes, but they can turn it off any day, like they did with Ping for iTunes. Right. Yeah, so, but at the same time, they can. Hey, this is something that if they wanted to, they could go to Facebook really? and be like, "Hey, we're doing this thing." But Facebook does not have to say yes. I know. And maybe they've already had the discussion. I'm sure they did. Hey, you know who would love? Th- you know who would love this? Hmm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Can I still tweet my, like, hey, there's a, a box of all the thing, you know, there's still a box, there's still an update, status update thing. Boom, I want to talk, I want to, you know, I want to say something here. Mm-hmm. Can I send that to all the people who are in my Google list, and I want to send it to all the people who are on my Twitter list, or that are on my Twitter timeline? How is that not a thing? How is that not linked in some way, form, or fashion? It should be... And I, I, I want to know how they're going to handle notifications with this. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like, I mean, this is, uh, most of this is new. It is like a gathering of things that were like here and there and all over the place. But to make room for this, Google did shut down several services like Google Health was cut and a bunch of other things that just weren't very popular were cut to make room for this. And this is by no means a full scale launch. Um, this is not being pushed anywhere except for to the nerds at the moment. I think you can join it. I think it is open join or something. They were and actually they're currently over capacity is what they are. Oh wow! Because so I was gonna say I I I I, yeah. I I consider myself a pretty nerdy person and I had wave and buzz pretty early and I didn't yeah. see anything. Yeah, wave wave uh, could have been something cool, but totally wave wasn't. wave could have been something cool. The problem was is that it was meant to be real time. Yeah, and they didn't build any sort weird. of offline people, things. People weren't into really it. ready for that. It, right. Oh, I think really. they, I think they were. I think people wanted it. They saw the 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 capabilities of it. The problem was is that it was meant for you to sit there and look at it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was no notification that hey, this has been updated. And for, uh, I'm sorry, this right here, mm-hmm. iPhone or Android or any mobile in general, this. Is where you need to be. Yeah. yeah. You need to tell, like, I need to be told somehow, an email, a text message, a push notification on my phone. Hell, if that thing runs on the background on an Android phone and, and sends some sort of notification to the screen that says, hey, uh, your wave about uh, next week's uh, happy hour is uh, just got updated. The only thing that That's makes sense for wave 
is if you're in an office environment where for where I worked, I am did this. You know, this is how I communicate with everybody in the office and remotely. I had an I am it popped up. There you go. That's how we chat. Only way this makes sense for me for managing projects together and that the, in the real time fashion is if I'm living in that all day. Mm -hmm. That is the only application. And there just wasn't much room for expansion. The development community didn't get off the ground. It was, And it's not like they didn't eke it out. It was an invite system. Yep. Yeah. But it just... People, I feel like, like there's enough getting it. of... Go ahead, Rob. I feel like there's enough of like a whole package that they're putting together with the Google Plus project. They're also still called a project, which mm -hmm. makes me think that it's like really, really early just for the nerds. Um... But there's enough here that I can very absolutely see every single one of these icons worked into an Android home screen in the very near future. Or, say, a, a Google Plus iPhone app. Would yeah, nice exactly. Like, it's something that version. eventually they would work in, and eventually they would say, oh, hey, you can share this stuff, and it's APIs, yeah. and they will absolutely have website APIs that's, that probably that's the come only first. Thing. So that's the only thing I see this thing picking up on is if it works has to work hey it has yep. to work easy and then they push it to you on your android phone on the google homepage. You know what? like they did chrome for how long and look how well they're doing there you know how you know where this is gonna you know where this is gonna hit hmm. the people who are sick of facebook that's yes. it there you go right here a lot of people ask ago. the question like when is facebook going to die and the thing is that facebook is not going to die until people have a compelling reason to move to a different service right. i'm not mm -hmm. i haven't been on i haven't been on so, i deleted my facebook account haven't even tried to look at it in six months and even when i get links to things that are on facebook and you'll see them like fb.me i don't yeah. even click on them because i can't get to them because it's always some like oh click this link and go to this and then i have to like sign into facebook i'm like you i'm not signing into facebook i don't want to go to your stupid link funny uh funny coincidence hey mike do you use chrome yes i do have um, you tried to use the latest version of chrome with facebook in the last week yeah it's been uh kind of a bear lately i can't look kind of kind of broken right you can't broken. look at your notifications yeah, or that's that's interesting yeah you can't use yeah. to do the drop down it won't load stuff from notifications from the drop down it takes forever to load pages uh, I have been wondering what's going on. I've noticed some tweets about it from other people, and uh, a lot of my work is is on Facebook for communities and stuff. What's going on, Rob? Um, well, uh, first of all, if you are a conspiracy theorist, not you, Mike, general public, the people listening to this show, if you're a conspiracy theorist and you think we know that you Facebook are. is broken on Chrome because Google is launching this, uh, I want you to punch yourself in the face because you're wrong. By the way, I, I did say, uh, uh, never mind, there was a pun in there and nobody caught uh. it. And if you're a conspiracy host, and we know who you are. We know who you are. We know you people. <laughs> uh, so I the other end of this, also in the past week, uh, there's a rumor spinning up that Facebook is teaming up with uh, the Mozilla project really? to create a. Um, they are teaming up with. Remember Rockmelt and how much how yeah. how much fun we had making fun of Rockmelt. <laughs> yeah, I got an invite to that and I never used it. It's so awful. Um... <laughs> But uh, there's a rumor that they're teaming up with uh, the Mozilla Project and uh, Rockmelt to make a uh, awesome Facebook browser type thing. And so the other end of it is that Facebook has poisoned the well, and they are making it so their website does not work in Chrome very well. Yeah, that's, well, that's and guess honestly what happened that's is dirty. Google updated their browser, and Facebook stuff isn't compatible with it. So deal with okay, it. Okay, so Facebook's got to play catch up. Yeah, Basically. Facebook just does catch up. Okay. It happens. It's web compatibility, folks. It doesn't always work. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm getting to that. I, I'm starting to see that this whole like thing. Facebook is, and, and rightfully so, they're trying to take over their own little world, and they want their own app and their own stuff to get to it, like a you know this web browser. Oh, but, uh, fun news that came out today, uh, or it was it was either today or yesterday that uh, uh, Facebook tablet app first one going to be on the touchpad, not the iPad. Really? Yep. No Facebook app for the iPad yet, but the touchpad's going to have one day one. How does that make sense? So that oh, is. Oh, I'm so that certain is HP paid them a poop load of money. Wow. Um, wow. But uh, I will say this: I'm really interested in the in the touchpad. I think this is the legitimate contender to the it iPad. It looks it looks interesting. We it talked about that slick. a few weeks ago. It's got its stuff together. Uh huh. Although I will say this, Apple did a very nice job of getting their crap together with notifications quickly enough that mm -hmm. they uh mm -hmm. So so you in. think they finally saw a threat? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the first one. And by the way, the uh, person who is in charge of now Palm, uh, and by the way, I'm using air quotes because Palm's dead. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's in charge of the touchpad and the, and the pre-operating system at uh, HP? Mm-hmm. It's John Rubenstein, who re- developed the original UI for the iPhone mm-hmm. and iOS. So this guy knows his stuff, and he knows what works and what doesn't. And he's a smart guy, and uh, I, I'm really interested to see. I really like the pre the the uh, uh, the web OS. I think it's a great idea. I really wish their hardware didn't stink. I'd love to pick up a pre three, uh, and test drive that little guy for a while. Um, if you're listening, anybody out there, AT and T or Verizon, whenever the pre three comes out, slide one my way. Uh, you won't, but hey, offers on the table. And uh, yeah, I, I really think that uh, that people are now starting to pay Facebook to get those privileges. I can see it. It's I big really enough. do. That Facebook enough. is now big enough that people are now paying Facebook. To get like, oh hey, we want to make sure that we're the first ones on the block with Facebook app mm. or with a Facebook application. Hey, one one last story, we we got to get out of here pretty soon. Yeah. But one thing we can't uh, uh, kind of deny because it's made so much noise in the last week. Of course, it was released last Tuesday, Final Cut Pro X. Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah, it's been making a lot of noise because a lot of the 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 video professionals are not quite happy with it uh you're not happy with it are you i haven't played with it yet i i um i almost threw down for it but uh i i that whole uh can't open the final cut seven projects because i wanted it immediately for a project i was having a problem with technically and one of the features in there i thought was gonna solve my problem but because you can't open the original because i can't open the project i would have to rebuild it from scratch all of the templates from this from if you're if i'm looking at like my old job i do not understand how they're going to upgrade i mean fine tracks and everything are dealt with differently but having to go from old projects to this it, there's no reason to upgrade it there that was point. talk that this was originally called or that somebody called this um final cut th- this should have been the new version of final cut express yeah and yeah. not final cut pro because well the, the the thing the basically the gist of it is uh it is obviously it's 64 bit from the ground up of course because they built it it Brand seems new. like from yeah. iMovie. You open it up, it says import an iMovie project. Not yeah. import Final right. Cut 7. Not import your project. Import your I video. think that those will come yes. with yep. software updates. And this is, and it will be, and there are people who are looking at this, and even the people at Apple were saying, look, this is the beginning, not the end. Yes. And we want to make, yes. this is a complete, effectively, it's a complete rewrite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, they the say... same thing is going from OS 9 to OS 10. A lot of this is a side effect of them waiting so incredibly long to do this overhaul. Mm-hmm. We, we, we haven't seen a big update. The last update was a joke. Time. The last, the last Final Cut up, yeah. update it was only it was only nine ninety nine. It w- wasn't like the twelve thirteen hundred dollars that it usually is for the full suite. And it was yeah. obvious they didn't even really update Studio Pro or compressor. They didn't really this time either. Um, it's nice you can get it for just fifty bucks versus whatever or motion yeah. for fifty. You can also pick and choose. You yeah, just, which is kind of nice. In the past, if you wanted compressor, you had to get studio, yeah. right? And, 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 and you know, I, I can tell you personally, Keller is useless because you have to learn it from the ground up. It was yeah. something that was imported in. It doesn't it doesn't translate well or import well from the other uh, the other programs. Maybe somebody that's more into the video and understands Keller uh, would would fight me on this. But for us and it, with our yeah. uses in, in a development house, it just did not work for us. But this is also, like, I mean, if you have, like, for how long it's been in the dev cycle for Final Cut Pro, if you have Adobe Photoshop um, 7 Mm -hmm. and you try and update to CS5, Mm -hmm. it's going to blow your mind and nothing's going to work. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I I don't want to be apologetic on, on Apple's behalf because what, like, there's a lot of basic things that are a little kludgy and things like that they should have warned people about or should have given more of a heads up or I feel like it should have spent more time in the lab, but it's, it's definitely something that's going to be fixed over time. Like AJ yeah, said, yeah. they say you know, stuff like multi cams coming back. Some of the support for file types that it doesn't support, like it doesn't support what red, uh, the new red cameras, uh, which are which big high end cameras, yeah, which yeah. you don't have, which is not like I have a red camera, but still that that's something in the industry. What about, know? um, Oh man. Oh, does that mean, does that mean it's got, time to end the show? No, no. I just got a text message. Oh. Uh, the, 
there was a Conan O'Brien mm-hmm. parody, yes. which I thought was amazing because this is not a piece of software that really anybody. This knows is about. an iMovie. This is not iMovie. I mean, this so is their th- high end video software, and Conan O'Brien put together a sketch or a little comedy parody bit about Final Cut Pro, which made me laugh because, like, the way they did it was like a high school movie, mm-hmm. like everything was cut really poorly and everything like that. They're like, hey, the new version of Final Cut Pro is great. And then yeah. it goes like somebody else talking. No, I feel like I feel like another part of the problem is that so like yes they like they mishandled a bunch of stuff and it doesn't seem like it was quite finished. But at the same time, I feel like we're seeing Windows XP versus Windows 2000 backlash where people are just like, oh, there's too many fancy buttons and I can't seem to get anything to move it right because like it that. doesn't look. The it same. changes things. I watched a little bit of tutorial to it. It is. Uh, I was talking to my one friend that works for PXI and he says it's a. Uh, it's a shift. It is a yeah. shift in how you edit, and it's not track based. It's uh, they they describe it as a spine. If you're used to track, you set things on top of each other. It's layered. This is you put something in. You have to make a blank slug to make your open space. If you have to put something in there later, like everything just goes along a spine. There's not there's no gaps. It doesn't allow you to do that. It's not. I'm going because you know case in point, you would have that problem where you had that extra footage you put at the end of the line. Maybe it was a bad practice. But uh, then you'd have this big gap, forget about, render out this hour-long video when it was really supposed to be five minutes, because you forgot that footage was all the way out there. This isn't going to happen with that. Everything's visual and connected. Um, it's just a different way of thinking about putting video together. And it needs to happen at a certain point. If this thing, I'm going to buy it. I will buy it. Probably within the next month. Not right away. I'm not looking to move over to it, because if I can't pump out projects quick with it, that doesn't work for me as a freelancer. Uh, but it is something that I think is going to make sense, especially with all the color, the syncing, uh, the other features in there that would make things easier over time once I get used to it. So on that note, we got to wrap this thing up, guys. AJ, thanks for joining us today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for giving us an update on the beta, the newest beta. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, more than happy to come on the show, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll invite me back some other times. Sometimes. Never. Sometimes. Never again. Man, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, thanks for joining us again. I'm glad you left you left your clothes on this time. Uh, I try. I'll be naked next week. Okay. Promises, yeah. promises. Check him out, robjdlc.com. And, uh, and, and hey, next week, guys, we do have a guest that's scheduled to come here. Charles Kim's going to be joining us of Geneva Mars. Uh, that is an Alpha Lab company. We've talked to a few of those before. Uh, they, <laughs> I, I checked out their site to check out what they're doing. Meet Zachy. He's a robot. There you go. Uh, oh. They're doing it's a uh, fun educational cartoons and games since last Monday is their is their pitch here. So go check that out at GenevaMars.com and we'll have them in here and uh, we're probably going to have him using that spiffy uh, uh, show off cam we were using for AJ's beta uh, show off last week. Right up there. You gonna point? Yeah, oh, it's, it's, no, it's there. It's it. right there. <laughs> so thanks everybody for joining us again if you want to join us live we're here every tuesday 7 p.m eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com follow our twitter at awesomecast uh you can also contact us at awesomecast at uh sorgatronmedia i'm sorry or contact at awesomecast.com i have to get these things synced up 724-25 acast if you want to call us at 724-252-2278 and you can find us on itunes mediafly roku boxes blip tv youtube please leave comments subscribe to us everything so you don't miss an episode uh and some other places coming soon as we get the word handed down here uh for rob aj and everybody in the chat room thanks you guys have been awesome have an awesome week I'm I'm Anthony Walker and this is Unsung, the nonprofit news magazine show that features news and events from our nonprofit community and also the good things that you do. You can also check out previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. Nerds in the club and you know how we do. Hand for cash and a couple of brews. So many women, so little time. Gotta find a power rangers. Our available on Blu-ray, Watch It Now on Netflix. So that's Hi, this is Sor here. It's my report for Chachi Says. Of course, I'm on the offending, the uh, uh, opposite. The crotch.
This there is was... golden stuff. I mean, you could chop it. Look at that. Yeah, seriously, this is awesome cast gold right here. I yeah. still haven't posted the extra stuff from Mayhem last week. Gold edition. <laughs> did you Did you catch when we were trying to like? No. Like adopt the TNA wrestler. No. Oh, we started singing at the end the Sarah McLaughlin oh, song. The Sarah McLaughlin oh, song amazing. was out of control. It was amazing. That had me in tears <laughs> at work. I'm sitting there at my desk going like this. Oh, shit, this is funny. <laughs> this is fucking funny. But I'm sitting there at my desk like, no, I'm not crying. No. No, tears of joy. Like, no. <laughs> my eyes are down. Oh, in my God. Of an angel. <laughs> For you know how hard how you hard can... is that to keep in sync over Skype? Really hard. <laughs> it's hard to do anything in in sync over Skype. I know, I know. That but we always delay. insist on singing on that show. Now that Microsoft is uh now that Microsoft's spying on you. He'll fix that. They'll fix that. They'll... No, they won't. They're gonna no. put they're gonna put <laughs> spying in that shit. It's gonna crash every day. <laughs> I can't. They're gonna, they're, somebody's I love gonna that I could keep drawing this joke out. So they're gonna put out a commercial. It's like, you know, all those other video conferencing apps, they make it so like you see other people mm -hmm. and you look into the camera, mm -hmm. and that's just a big waste of time. You shouldn't have to spend <laughs> any time at all looking at other people because that's oh, do, do you use you Skype? Just do you like enjoy Windows talking Mobile. to people? You don't look at your phone. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> is that chat room readable over there? I know it's smaller this week. <laughs> It's a bit small. There's a little bit of a uh, of a size issue on that. But monitor. I can I can see. Uh, the word I of the can't day. see. I can see it. The word of the day is boner. Yes, oh, that's, okay. Yeah, okay, that's good. That. That's good. That's a good start. <laughs> I can read that's that. That's good start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey guys. Hey, hey team. Let's get started. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Guess what's uh, guess what the primary display on my desk at work is right now? Balls. Is it a CRT? It's not a CRT. Is it an iPad? <laughs> it's not an iPad. Is it a 30-inch Apple Cinema display? Nope. Projector? Uh-uh. He's got this little grin like it, we're gonna. he's going to blow our minds. You have a Commodore 64 right now, don't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. It is a 55-inch uh, Samsung LED TV. That is quite a sizable monitor. 3D. It's huge. It's gigantic. Awesome you. cast, you would know that Android is not an open platform. If you were a listener of the, the Awesome hell? Cast, where are you? What is where going? am I? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, how's it going? Hi. I think we should let Rob open it with that shot. <laughs> Rob, you're opening. Hi with guys, that shot. welcome to the Awesome Cast. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. Let's what go. Let's do this. What are you doing? Okay, I, was, I have uh, a <laughs> battery life. You can see it behind me. <laughs> so I had to <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We're rolling with this. We're rolling Don't with this. Don't mind me. I'm just hanging right. out behind We're the on this. monitor. Five, four. <laughs> hey, guys. I just choked. <clears throat> <laughs> you want to try that again? <clears throat> Uh, Big gulp. Swallow first. You should know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right Tom, That's Tom. not safe for cable access. Silence. Um, Code of mm. silence. 